Well, welcome everybody to the Martha Munizzi podcast. I'm Martha Munizzi, and I am so excited that you join me today. On this podcast, we have a lot of fun. We talk about all kinds of things that interest me <laughs> and hopefully interest you. And uh, But today, I've got somebody here that really, really interests me a lot, and that is my daughter. My husband and I have three children, and this is one of our daughters. This is Danielle, our oldest. Hello. Danielle. And she's here with me today, and we've got a lot to talk about. Yes, we do. And I want to just kind of share with you a little bit about kind of how I raised this beautiful child. No, I want to <laughs> I want to just kind of give you a little bit of background on our relationship and, you know, over the years, how Danielle and I have worked together. A lot of people ask me, you know, how did you write those songs or, you know, how did you create these ideas, some of the ideas that we have? And I have to say so much of what you see, uh, even in the last few years, has really been Danielle's um, kind of her energy and her uh, dreams and things that, and, and her ideas that she's brought to the table. She's really smart. Oh, that's, that's so sweet. <laughs> What else? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She's, and she's very funny. She's hilarious. But we've had the opportunity to work together yeah. for a long time, mm -hmm. um, singing together. Uh, as a matter of fact, I brought her on the road with me when she was just a little girl. When we, my husband and I first started traveling, it was over 20 years ago. Right. And so we took all of our kids with us and we, we um, got a tour bus and just traveled everywhere. And it was a great time. It was a difficult time because I felt like my kids need to be with friends and be social, but they really enjoyed being on the road with us. And we would go in to big arenas and big conferences and we would go to different countries. And this little girl at 10 years old, she's not little anymore, but back then, this beautiful girl, <laughs> she would run our product table oh, yeah. like at 10 years old. That's, that's the... The churchy way. I was the I was your merch girl. She was the merch girl. We called she it was product the merch table. girl. Teaching tapes, t shirts. Oh yeah. All of that. And CDs. she ran she ran the table. And so we would put her in touch with whoever was, you know, I, a liaison for the church or the ministry. And yeah. man, she just was like she was an adult from the beginning and you did a great job. I had a good run. I had, had a good, a good run. run. And then one time we were in a we were in another country, remember? And it was an outdoor concert. Yeah. And we were outside and somebody came up and said to her in her presence, within earshot, said, Oh, I have that CD. I've probably burned it what, ten times. Remember yeah. That? She well, a lady and her friend came up. <laughs> That's funny. I forgot about that. <laughs> and her friend goes, I think I'm gonna buy the new CD. And her and the lady goes, Don't buy that, I'll burn it for you. I must have been 14. If people don't know what burning CDs are, I'm, I'm sure everybody understands. Back in the day it's when CDs mm -hmm. had CD drives, <laughs> they, they would burn CDs. And I looked at the other lady and I said, please don't do that. I made her feel real bad too. You did. This is probably bad. I said, please don't do that. That's food on my table. <laughs> and she laughed and I was kidding. I was, I don't know where I got the, the, the guts, guts to, to say that it, at, you at did. like 14, but you I did. did. But she could hold her own anywhere we went. She has always just really been a leader, amazing and not afraid. And it's been, it's been great to have her up as a part of our team. And then she's got her own music and she does her own thing. She's really talented and it's incredible how musical she is. But I know back a few years ago when we said we were going to start a church, my husband, you know, your dad, my husband mm -hmm. um, decided to start a church here in Orlando, Florida. She looked at us like, are y'all crazy? Have you lost your minds? And what does this mean about for me? But once you kind of got through the shock and realized it was God that spoke, um, she jumped in and you w led our worship and you're a big part of the worship team. Um, our youth and young adults just has served so faithfully it in our home church at Epic Life. And it has just been incredible. It's challenging to work with your family. We could do a whole podcast on just working with family. Right. We probably have to have a therapist to come in and sit with yes, us on that. But certified anyway, certified counselor. <laughs> uh, but it, it, no, honestly, it takes a new, another set of skills to work with each other. It really does. It's not easy uh, when you're working with family. It's not easy when you're working with people right. on a daily, when you're creating ideas or, or coming up with content, whatever it is. But then to work with family, it can be very challenging. So we've had to just really ask the Lord to help us. And it's fun. It has, yeah. it has its perks, but yeah, it's definitely challenging. It is. And, and it, does like, it definitely has its perks. But here's the key is, and I'm not saying we do this right all the time, but we usually try to have those moments where we're vulnerable, transparent. We say, okay, how am I doing? How are you doing? What do we need? And, and we try to do that as much as we can. Probably could yeah. do it more. Um, but that really does help. It just takes a lot of transparency. But I have people say, 
Uh, even earlier today, someone said, the fact that you work with your family, it is so inspiring. It is so amazing. And to me, that means it's all worth it. Whatever we've had to fight through and struggle through and communicate better through, it's all worth it because yeah. there are so many people that are inspired by watching families work together. And you and I have had a lot of great opportunities to even, we've written a lot of songs together and we wrote for this latest record, Best Days. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. So don't leave. We have a brand new album out. And That's right. I can't wait to share about that. But Danielle's written a lot of great songs and you have an EP that's been out for a while that you can find on YouTube. You can- yeah, my vintage, my vintage, vintage EP, Know You More, is available wherever music. Know You More, it's so good. It's streaming like videos. Yeah, I have a new single coming out too, the first Friday of August. The date is escaping me, but the first Friday in August, <laughs> there will be a single and it'll be a fun video following that. But yeah, you've given me a lot of opportunities to to collaborate with you either on your music or, you know, you write for a lot of other people or people ring you up and, and you allowed me to be in um, some of those rooms and a part of those, some of those opportunities. And I've been extremely grateful Aww. for that. Um, yes, you have. It's been, it's been extremely, uh, it's, it's a massive privilege. I remember probably from the beginning, I want to say, cause you were always singing. You still are. You're always <laughs> singing, always writing, always thinking of an, of a new idea. And so I never really saw you, I don't have memories of you stopping t- to sit down and write. I think the earliest one that I would have would be like your No Limits record. I don't remember the previous albums. I was probably just too little or in school or something. So I remember around No Limits, which Noel Hall was the producer and we were all in the house and that you were, you were the family, I think we were homeschooled at that time. So we were really all a part of that process. And I just remember how you approached songwriting was really, really organic and honest and that kind of helped me not take it so seriously where it's this, it takes all the joy out of it. And I, that's probably my earliest memory of like, you would kind of be like, all right, let's table the song. If, if it's not finished, it's not coming together perfectly all at once. Let's table it and come back to it. You know, you say that all the time. It's, if it's not fun, let's not do it. You know, if it's, if it's too challenging, you know, it'll, it'll come together on its own. And that's kind of the approach that I always kind of take to the creative process and really anything that I'm creating. And I really credit that to you. Well, thank completely. you. Well, I think some people would say that I should be more disciplined and I should <laughs> sit still longer to actually get it done. And I've worked with different producers that will say, no, we're not leaving to go eat. We're going to stay here and finish <laughs> a song. I'd say, yeah, but if I just need a break and then I'll fit. But it depends on who you're working with. But the last few times we've written together, I think we've written with a few artists, but one was a great friend of ours, Anthony Evans. Yes. Shout out to Anthony. Yes. I mean, great song. We've really had an opportunity to write with him and uh, and some, I think, are, what are really great songs, just the Absolutely. collaboration. And you know, for if you're a songwriter, I'll take a minute to say this. If you're a songwriter, collaborate. Sometimes we just want to be able to see what we can do on our own. Right. But I encourage you, you know, collaborate. And I, I was, uh, I did a, a Zoom interview the other day. I can't remember it. I get this question asked a lot. People will call in and they'll say, so how did you get your songs heard? I've got songs and I don't have a melody, but I have lyrics or I have lyrics and, and, and no melody or I, ha- I don't, but I don't have a musician. What do I do? Right. And I always tell them, you don't necessarily, well, it's always good to have a musician, but find somebody in your church yeah. that's a great musician, a guitar player, keyboard player, and take them to dinner or buy their lunch or pay them $50 and say, yeah. can we spend the afternoon together and let me sing you or, or read to you what I have yeah. or let me send it to Help you. Help me on a figure out these chords. Yeah. You know, put together a little demo track for me. Do what you can. They're, they're, it's, it's, it's a deception out there that you have to have this perfect song written in one setting or this creative yeah. project all done at the same time. It's a process. It is. And more often than not, um, you're going to always be developing your relational skills, your ability yes. to collaborate. That's the most important skill that you can have as a, as a creative is that collaboration muscle that you always should be. It doesn't matter if you're super well connected. If you just, you feel like I know everybody that I need to know to take me where I need to go. You're really one relationship away. Yeah. Um, you actually used to say that you're, you would say you're one book away or you're one relationship away um, from from whatever that next is or for mm-hmm. for the goal that you're trying to meet and that's some good advice it, well I, well what, yours not mine I mean I guess no, yeah you should true. take my advice <laughs> I, I probably stole it from somebody I'm sure I did but um, it's your one great book away a leadership book on being a better leader right you know your one 
great conversation away, asking the right questions, being around the right people from a breakthrough level for right. a season. Anyway, that's, that's important, you know, and God brings new relationships into your life and opens doors. I know now, now as you're collaborating with other people, whatever it is, if it's a book, whatever it is, it could be songs. It could, it could be anything creative as you're collaborating. You're going to know pretty quick, you know, if the, if you have chemistry or if it's really clicking, cause we've had times where I, we've, we've done, uh, writing sessions, not very often, but I mean, some of the best writers and it we doesn't like, go well. It's not going at like yeah. nothing. You don't is leave happening. with a song, or there's that one person in the room <laughs> that just kind of dominates and exactly maybe overexpresses their opinion. Or yeah, those skills are so so important. And to be you don't you don't have to be perfectly self aware all the time. But I'll say this, especially I learned this from working with family. Be open to that feedback, mm-hmm. no matter how they say it. If they're good. they're never gonna say it perfectly. They're never gonna say it no matter if, if it's working with family, if it's working with you know you and your best friend writing or creating an idea or even putting together a business, whatever yeah. that venture is, when you are building a relationship while, while you're in the middle of a creative process, just keep your guard down, be open, yes. don't take offense, don't bank it as some might say, I heard that the other day, don't bank <laughs> it for later and pull it out out of nowhere and say, well, I gave you, you know, you got, you got to do this on the song. So I'm, you know, cashing it in for, for this, you know, no, there, there, when you were younger, I remember specifically, and all the moms probably can relate to this of daughters. Um, I would, she'd be at the piano playing a song and I'm in the other room going, that sounds amazing. And I'd run in like, play it for me. And she would stop and say, I'm not playing anything for you. Get out, just get out, get out of my room. Like, what? Because she just wasn't ready yet. And I understand that now you weren't, you were, you know, really young. But you always did. You did give real feedback. You didn't I know, try I to did. spare my feelings in spite of the skill that you knew I was trying to build. And that's something that we need to really pay attention to. Cause sometimes we, as a creative person or somebody over the years, I've had people say, here's my song, listen to it and tell me what you think. They never mean that. <laughs> they just want you to say it's perfect. They don't right. mean it because, and here's the reality. If you get hard feedback, it's usually because the person that's giving you the feedback really hears the potential. Right. If they go, oh, it's good. Can, you know, great attempt. That was sweet. That means it's probably not that great. Right. But if they can say, okay, here's what you need to do. That means that there's, that there's some meat and bones here mm-hmm. that can really come together. So r- learn how to take criticism and feedback and, and critiquing. It's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy, but you won't be able to really grow in your gift, whatever that gift is. If you don't listen, what I really want to talk about is something that we're all very excited about because we have just released a brand new album mm-hmm. and it's yes. called best days best days and we're really excited about it we were able to write together your sister nicole was a big part of that we put kind of a writing team together um kind of inadvertently didn't really we didn't know what was going to happen super but fast really really fast and danielle nicole and i and then our producer david outing we all wrote eight songs i don't know what in two days maybe three days it, it happened so quickly Um, and we're going to talk about with Nicole in another podcast about one of the songs that she wrote, but it was just like, God was just handing us these, these songs straight from heaven. We listen, I've written a lot of songs and I've heard a lot of songs and you don't get opportunities like this, like moments where you just feel like heaven is downloading songs. And that's really what it felt like. And I remember one day I walked, um, out of the studio here and, and I walked back in. I don't know what I did. I came to get, I went to get something to drink. I don't know. <laughs> I walked back in and all of a sudden I'm like, what is that? And David was freaking out. You were excited. And they were like, listen to the song. And it was fight for me. Oh yeah. Fight and for me. I thought, wait, that's that song Danielle wrote like two years ago. Tell the story behind that song. Cause that's a great, that's a great story. Absolutely. I, I, uh, I started working on an idea for a song probably two and a half years ago now. And it was in a rough time. I don't remember the exact scenario. I just remember feeling just kind of weak and, and I'm a person that I just, I use songwriting, but I, I use even just playing the piano or playing whatever instrument just as a therapy, just to process my thoughts, process my emotions. I sometimes I'm slower in that area. So sometimes (laughs) singing it and kind of creating melody puts my thoughts in order. And so 
that's what I did with fight for me. Um, you fight for me, you turn praises to victory. And there was a couple extra, um, lyrics in there that or really just a, a, a melody, um, just to encourage myself when I was feeling down. And I remember at the time I was in a, a songwriting group chat with a couple of friends and I've already given them a hard time about this to their face. So, they missed. um, they they, it. No, they didn't. No, they're, they're amazing. They're <laughs> awesome. Well, whatever. It, it's all good. But I gave them a hard time already because I remember sending them a voice memo. But however, the song was in a completely different state. It was more of a ballad, more of a worship, slow song. It was a slow ballad. That, Absolutely. Very small. dramatic, extremely emotional. <laughs> and I didn't, I'm one of those people, I do not go overboard sending demos. I'm like, this is how I sound. This is where it's at deal with it. Other people are way more organized and have the ability to do like a click track on a pad and something nice and present a, a, a listenable demo. I don't do that. So it, I listened back to it too. And what I sent them was, was not great. <laughs> it was not good at all, but uh, they didn't respond when I sent it. They didn't respond. It was very interesting. So I remember feeling like, okay, well, it's not really a strong song and they're my honest friends. They would say something, you know, they would be real with me. Um, so I'll just put it on the back burner. Fast forward to fall of 2020, we were just throwing ideas out and our producer, David Outing is somebody that, um, he's a champion of others and he's, he's like a creative cheer captain. I don't know if he'll <laughs> he laugh is, at that. A, that is a great, but he, he that's, knows that's how to pull title. creative ideas from his own well, but while pulling the best out of you, yes. um, which was so exciting. And I learned so much from him. I told him that the other day, I'm like, man, I, you have no idea. I learned so much from working with you and collaborating on these songs. And so I started singing it out to him one day and I'm like, Hey, can I just show you this song? And so I sing it really slow, um, really dramatically. And he's like nodding his head, like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And he starts, as I'm singing it, he starts playing these clashing chords, like in double time. <laughs> and I'm like, you not here. I'm trying to tell you something, man. I'm pouring my heart out to you. This is my lullaby song. This is my, I was in a Ballad's low, a ballad. yeah, I, this is my personal worship moment. And you're like, plunk, 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 plunk. <laughs> and uh, that's my piano sound. Plunk, that's plunk. your plunk, plunk. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> He was like, okay, cool. What if we flip it like this? And he just starts playing these turnarounds and these things. And I'm like, this energy is not at all what I had in mind, but I just said yes to it. We went for it and it came together in probably 30 minutes. Yeah. I want to say 25, 30 minutes and we're singing it and hashing out stuff. And David is so fast, but he's also extremely thorough at the same time. So what, what, the easy parts, we just kind of, it just came together so quickly. Right. And of course, all the amazing musicians and the incredible singers and Sharon and our vocal arranger, I mean, they, they pulled the every best. last bit of juice out of the song. So the um, yeah, it, it was an incredible process. I learned a lot. Yeah. I learned, you know, first of all, save all your voice memos and, and <laughs> organize notes in your phone. But second of all, you know, never take it to heart. Always be willing to, yeah. to try and try again and and you know that's what that says to me is they didn't miss it because they didn't respond. They really didn't. God had something else he was doing. Right. And that's the thing. You know, we can get so frustrated because when we, you know, ask for feedback or we send something to someone that we think they're going to be excited about or respond and then they don't, then we could easily go down this spiraling thought process of I'm a loser. That wasn't good. What am I thinking? And all because we're creating this narrative about something that someone thought. We don't even know that that's really what they thought. And we can right. end up feeling dejected. We can want to quit. And it could be completely wrong. I just pretend that everybody loves me. Everybody thinks that has I've learned not to let that, that kind of vacuum right. fill up with feelings of, of low self-esteem. I, yeah. I try to fill those vacuums of unknown with, God, you've got me. Something better's coming. There's a greater reason. I mean, it really is something that you can master in those moments and not feel and you, rejected. You're, you're good about not letting your, you don't let your emotions kind of define what we're working on. You stay very objective in those moments. Even if you really, really love it and you're really, really excited about it, you, you're, n you're not the kind of collaborator that it's like, because you very easily could have been like, you know, hey, y'all, this is my album. I need to write the bridge or, you know, I need to write a section or whatever, but you let that, 
that collaboration happen. And I think that's a strength and it's, it's an important skill to be able to say like, you know, I think creatives sometimes when we are really passionate about something, we can sometimes assign irrational emotions or just kind of overdo it emotionally when we're focused on something. Mm -hmm. So if we're focused on, you know, I just, I have this lyric and God just gave it to me. It's downloaded from heaven. You don't understand. I've said that before, rather than kind of rational understanding of what it's like to be part of a creative process. Um, you know, not just being receptive to feedback, but being willing to lay an idea down or lay a goal down in front of trusted people and peers and people that, you know, you're either submitted to or that you're working with. Mm -hmm. Um, and I learned that a lot, like when we've been writing for other artists, like there are certain things that you criteria you want to fit, you know, you're not writing more than just like, okay, let's write it in a a key that's comfortable for them, but also write it in a voice, create the, the, the theme, the structure around some, that, that something that suits them. Mm -hmm. Where in the, in the beginning, I wasn't like that. I was like, a good song has to be a good song and, and it needs to be this way or this is the way that God gave it to me and this lyric was downloaded from heaven. I remember I, I used to say that when you would be like, hey, why don't you work on that idea or tweak that verse or you know anything like that? And I would just take that to heart, especially like in my teens, early 20s, like, mom, this is, I had a deep worship moment with the Holy <laughs> Spirit. And I spent hours on this idea and you'd say, okay, that's great. Amen. I'm proud of you for spending time with the Lord, but that could still be better. And I think that all of that progress, all of that development, we, I really got to see some really, really unique ideas. And Mm -hmm. I don't, I personally don't feel like I've written anything like what we get to listen to on best days. I'm really, really proud of, of what we worked on. No, I I think really you're absolutely right. I think we, for what we've, created over the years I really think this is some of our best best songs by far and I think it's because of the collaboration it's yeah. putting really strong people that have strong writing abilities but beyond that it felt as if the touch of heaven was really on it and we can be great and brilliant and incredible I'm not saying we are I'm saying but you know the the greatest people can do what they do but it's nothing like when God's presence speaks through us or sings through us, we're like, where did that idea? I never thought of that before. Yeah. And the, yeah. the song Best Days is a song we've really been trying to write for a long time. And it's based on that scripture, Isaiah 43, which I love. And I love that scripture because it's such a prophetic, hope-filled encouragement. I love that scripture. It's so great. Isaiah 43, 19. This is, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? And really, what, that's what the whole album's about. Can you see what God's doing? And a lot of people would say, no, I can't see anything but lack. I can't see anything but fear. I can't see anything but just in, in inadequacy. Like, everything's falling apart, and God is saying, yeah. I'm doing something new. Can't you see it? No, I can't see it. Well, then he goes on and says, but can't you perceive it? Mm-hmm. So if you can't see it, at least be able to perceive it. In other yeah. words, I can still believe it. Yeah. I may not be able to see it happening. I Adjust your it. perspective. Or, That's right. You know, that, have some faith. <laughs> have some faith. Stir your faith up to see with spiritual eyes, not just your yeah. own regular eyes that you're seeing your circumstances, your circumstance in. He said, can you see it? He said, I'm making a way. Then he tells us what he's doing. Mm-hmm. This is, he says, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I'm, dri- I'm driving water through the, the, the wasteland of your yeah. life. And that is... What a promise. So that's what this song, Best Days, it's the title of this record. These are the best days. I'm doing a new thing. Yeah. I'll bring rivers to the dry land and water to the wasteland. I think you wrote all that. That was all you. Yeah. And shout out to you for allowing me again or me and Nicole to write the title track of the album, Best Days. Uh, That was an amazing experience. Watching that song come to life was so humbling, especially because if I'm really honest, when I came up at least with that chorus, best days in the verse. Um, It was the worst of days, not the best of days. And it was a really challenging time. It was. That summer, uh, summer of 2020, I remember it just felt like hardship after hardship. Yeah. And so much heartbreak and disappointment. It was was so hard. hard. And, you know, I can say that confidently and honestly now, but I just remember 
back in that time, it just felt like a lot of rejection. Like what's yeah. wrong with me? What's wrong with, you know, my personality or what I'm doing <laughs> or God, am I hearing you? And, and it was so hard. And like, it was hard for so many others and so many of the listeners I, I can imagine, you know, we all have our, our yeah. war stories of how we got through. But I remember specifically with best days after a really long day, feeling emotional, <laughs> feeling dejected, sitting down at the keyboard again. I, I think I had the keyboard in my room and pretty much like all the lights off and just kind of looking out the window, playing the piano, going, God, I am miserable. Please mm. help me. Yeah. Just really honestly through tears, yeah. this is the worst. And I really believe that the Holy Spirit began to comfort me. I believe that yeah. that's, that's who the Holy Spirit is. It's a, yeah. he's a person. He is our comfort. And I felt comforted in that moment. And I just heard these scriptures kind of in a different way. These are the best days. Yeah. I'm doing a new thing. I'll put, bring rivers to the dry land, waters to the wasteland. These are the best days. Um, can't you see it? Don't you perceive it? And so I just started to sing that with basic chords and through tears. If you hear my original voice memo, I'm like <laughs> crying and, and these are the best days and it's nothing listenable, but it was honest. And that that's where I was. And I really thought that would just be something for me. And so a couple of nights later, we, a couple of nights later, we had a, a worship night at our church. Shout out to Epic Life. We All love right, you so Epic. much. We love our church. Yes. They're, they're amazing. And we had a worship night and we just kept going and going. And that night just got longer and longer and we were having these spontaneous moments. Yeah. It was so powerful. And I remember I looked at Josh, I looked at some of our team members and I was like, I'm going to sing something. I'm gonna, <laughs> just trust me. And I was like, Hey guys, can I sing something for you? I just was bold. I really felt like that was a, a, a moment to maybe just share that if it encouraged one person, if it uplifted one person, or maybe I just made it all about me and I wanted to no, sing you my song good. idea. No, no. no I'm <laughs> totally kidding. I really, I really obeyed the Holy spirit and, and also our pastors, you and, and dad, you guys encourage us to be, to lean into our gifting, to lean into prophetic worship moments. And so, so I did, I started to sing that and people really responded and it was a great night. A couple of days later, I think that's when we were working on ideas with David and things kind of just yeah. came together. He came down, we completed the song. Nicole had a, a chorus that just fit perfectly. The bridge came together. The bridge was a little trickier, but everything just kind of fit together. And yeah. when you hear best days, I'm excited and I, and I want to know what everybody's going to think. I, I hope they love it. Um, but it's just a journey that you go on when you listen to it. It's like several songs in yeah, one. It is. It is. And we even have like a throwback moment at the end. The whole album really is personifies those words, best days. You know, it, it, it's, it really is all how you look at it, how you look at your life, even though there are seasons and moments where we might face tragedy, we might face loss. There's so many friends and family that we know around our life, in our lives around us, have, that have experienced great loss. But at the same time as believers, God, we know that there's more to life than just this world that we yeah. live in. And that even in our loss, even in tragedy, great things can spring up. And that's exactly, that's what this whole record's about. That's what best days is really about. I can't wait to really give you more about that. But you know, Danielle, I'm just excited that we got a chance to work on this record together. I can't wait for everybody to hear it. And I just know that even with this podcast, if you're driving right now and you're listening, or maybe you're sitting in your house and you've got your laptop on and you're, you're watching this, you see two people who are related mother, daughter, um, who have had conflict, who have had great seasons, hard seasons, just like every mother and daughter. But it's amazing if you'll just commit to God and commit to relationship and loving one another more than yourself. It's amazing what God can do through you. But listen, it, we're, we're, we got to end it. I don't want to, but we got to end it because we're going to come back next week. We've got more yes. podcasts for you. Thank you so much for having me on. Danielle, you're amazing. Appreciate you. I love, love you. you. I appreciate Thank you. you. She is really, really talented. You can check out her music too. And this podcast is going to be streaming on all kinds of different platforms. You can actually follow us at Martha Munizzi on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You can follow our uh, church, Epic Life. You can follow us at Epic Life ORL. Oh, wow, yep. And Danielle has her own music, 
Danielle against is some of your your <laughs> yes. na- your names. Tell us. She's dropping my publishing can... company. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find my music, or you can find me on social media at Danielle Munizzi. And um, yeah, I've got some music coming out soon of my own. It's it's really exciting it's and amazing. a video and just always coming out with new fun things. Yes. And so we're just getting started. So guys, keep it right here. We've got another podcast coming next week and so many great things we're going to be talking about in the weeks to come. Um, more stories and behind the scenes about the album, best yes, days. I cannot wait. So share this with family and friends and let people know that we're, that we've got a podcast so that they can be a part of this as, as well. Listen, we love y'all. Have a great day.